Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is game two of the Point C game match from this weekend. So, second match on the same map. This is the Foggy Rain Environmental Condition. Uh, we're going to see some interesting strategies as they start to realize what went wrong and what went right from last match and likely adjust. Oh, and if you want to play games, you know the deal. Go to Discord link in the description. We play weekly Saturdays, 11 a.m. PSD. Purple side, purple is in the mountain. They are fully exploring this area. They're getting all the resources. Great steel node here. Now, this is a great start because you're away from the other teams. But on the flip side, you actually have less resources inside the mountain mines. And there's a lot of areas where walking is really slow. So it's something that you do have to be cognizant of, of when you're playing on this start. Blue team is mining right through finally. This is a ginormous base design. Um, I am so curious what the plan here is for these gentlemen. Looks like Pax and Padre are not sure. Is this going to be like a trap corridor? Um, what's the purpose of this? I'm very, very confused right now and intrigued, honestly. Red going for a pretty standard base design. I'm not too surprised by that one. Um, if you are going to build in the base, you just segment things into here. You could probably put a barracks in here, clean it out pretty quick. Uh, your tables on the other side and then component room in the middle. I like it. It's clean. It's efficient and it's a classic one. Uh, we are going to get some plasteel out pretty early. That can mean a lot of things. Um, that could be a shield belt. That could be um, some weapons for melee and there's a breach axe, um, but he's making a steel one, I believe. Interesting. I'm really curious what the plasteel is going to be for. Maybe for walls even? could be a lot of different uses on that. Now, something to keep a note though, is if you do make a weapon with Plasteel, it's gonna take a large amount of time to get produced. So it will be a little bit slower because of that. And it's something where if you get steel, it's a lot more of an early game weapon. Uh, 2200 steel already mined out by red team though. They're pretty much set for their steel needs. Aragon and Knight on yellow continue to dig into the mountain. Uh, they're getting that bridge up, so we saw this earlier on the yellow team, and having a quick way to transverse between the map is very, very beneficial. Helps on night flow. And look at this, Shadow is going for aggression. Shadow is quickly becoming known for being a skirmisher. We have seen him only in this one game so far, his debut match, and he is not gun shy. He makes a machine pistol always immediately, and then he just jumps in other teams with a skirmish. And this is amazing. It's not an all in. It's literally just uh, calculated, pick them off, keep them inside their base and causes a lot of aggression. But this is just very well done. And he's going to be able to hold a bunch of them at bay. Now, the problem is if he gets picked whatsoever, he's going to lose that pistol to them. And uh, there's a lot more of them than him. So Aragon gets a wall up, though. And look at that beautiful wall off. And they're going to have complete safety in here to complete their uh, their weapons. Now, I would want to see a bit of light here. I'm not sure if this is unroofed or not, but it looks like it is roofed. So right now they need a light source if they want to be efficient with that. Shadow is considering taking steel. That's a bit of a waste of time. Um, I'm not sure that he should probably commit to that. I think if I were him, I'd probably just keep shooting a place, but they honestly responded perfectly. You're not going to be getting in here more. And look at the component mining. Aragon and Knight are going to town on the components right now. Now, with this many resources dedicated to getting components, they have a big downside in the fact that they won't have all these resources towards making weapons or getting steel. Machine table gives off light. You're right, actually. I noticed there was a bit of a light source. That's good to know. So you actually don't need a light. Um, and then Aragon's just going to keep patching up the walls. So honestly, Shadow's boxed out and he's not going to be able to do anything here. Well, the just absolute payload. Now, Aragon and Knight, though, target number one. If you're any team on this map, you see it, Aragon and Knight, and you're ready for war. Uh, Gassy P is smoothing the walls. They're uh, making an excellent dining room so far. I have a feeling this will be a bedroom. Looks like they're really dedicated towards having mood management this game. And uh, that's kind of cool to see a team that does that. But Wrigley is stealing their components. This is, this is a rat strategy right now. Look at this, man. The components that are clearly blue teams. Wrigley is just going to mine and he's going to take them back to his base. Absolutely dirty. And you know what? They don't even care. Looks like Pax and P after getting eliminated so quickly last game, they're dedicated to the defensive game, making a beautiful base, keeping that mood up. And uh, you know what? Fair enough. Red side, there's a shield belt. So when we sell the plasteel, that's usually an indicator of a shield belt. And here it comes. 
Uh, shield belts don't take too much work. He's going to be able to get one or two of those out. Typically, you do want to get some decent melee weapons if you're going to run one of those. Uh, but it also can just use as a frontline blocker. You know, you can always pop out, take a few shots, and have your ranged guys behind uh, laying down suppressing fire. For weapons, we do see bolt action rifles. Um, not surprised there. Wrigley is a veteran of PvP and he likes to use ranged tactics. Uh, on the bottom, a bit of a development. Looks like purple is pushing up. Shadow 2, Shadow 1, they have the machine pistols. Uh, early aggression was staved off pretty much perfectly. And honestly, Aragon and Knight played this very well. Uh, they saw the aggression, they weren't ready for it, they didn't panic, they just doubled down on what they were doing. They got inside and they made sure to fortify the area. Now, the problem is they need to get these weapons out ASAP and it looks like two tool belts or tool cabinets that's going to make that done pretty quick. Uh, Purple is trying to mine into the base and uh, you know, it'll go pretty quick, but I think Riel is going to be ready. Those weapons are going to come out and there's no way two pawns are going to be able to pressure these guys when they have position in that many pawns. Yeah, it's interesting we didn't see shield belts. Now, um, Atro, the big downside to them, though, you need to keep in mind is you can't shoot your ranged weapon when you have one on. So you need to have a melee weapon and on a map where uh, like ice float, where there's so much terrain that you could walk up and get shot during. It's uh, it's a bit of a risk. Now, Aragon here and Knight, they have the most components by far of any team. Let's take a quick look. 145. Absolutely bonkers. And uh, look at this. Aragon wants the fight. He's digging down. He's saying, let's open it up. I got the weapons. I got the numbers. You're not going to be able to push me out. And uh, he's right. There's not extra weapons here. They only have one machining table. They've been pretty slow on weapons. Um, interesting to see some more longswords coming out. But without the shield belt, that's... Uh, not going to be great. And Grizzly Bear Revenge, what the hell happened there? Germany 1944, uh, looks like that's Lion. Lion took down a Grizzly Bear. Maybe he was hoping to manhunter it into another team, I'm not sure. And the last is dropping here. Some shots might come out from Yellow. Yellow is pushing up. Purple's going to need fall back. Uh, Yellow does have longer range weapons, but Purple does have two machine pistols and they'll shred anyone that comes through that cap corridor. I'd be a little bit worried here if I were purple. Um, honestly, I'd be a little bit worried if I was every team. Right now, yellow's taking such a distinct lead um, in terms of components. But you know what? Uh, purple is saying that, you know, we don't care. We'll just get it back. And there's a lot of components in this mini uh, mountain here. So they could easily catch right back on components and ignore the fight. And you don't want to take this corridor. Look at this. This is a death corridor right here. Anyone that walks through that, they're done. So there's pretty much no way here for them to contest it. And you know, purple's kind of winning. Purple has two pawns that are holding down four pawns effectively. So if you look at this at a manpower standpoint, Aragon and Knight have been significantly slowed down just by the threat of purple coming up. Oh, but what if Knight pushes out? This is dangerous. If Knight and Aragon came out as one four-man group, they could push Shadow 1 and 2 out. Problem is both are going to take casualties if they go for that. So definitely a high-risk play. Knight and Shadow... Oh, and they wall it off. All right, so Aragon and Knight do not want violence. They uh, they back out, they wall it up, and they're covered there. Uh, let's look at Red here and uh, update what's going on. So bolt action, machine pistols coming out, more machine pistols, shield belt. Incendiary launcher was completed. Wait a second. Oh my god. When did they sneak that out? There's going to be an incendiary launcher this map. Um, and if... I'm really curious what they're going to do with that. There's some grass, not too much Grizzly Bear Revenge. Um, they put it down. Is there another one, though? Oh, God, it's going to get on Shadow 1. They put him down, but not before Shadow takes a big hit. Grizzly Bear clawed him right across the torso and leg. That's uh, That hurts. He's going to need to tend that up pretty quick, and that's going to get him out of the fight for a little bit. When you do have a wounded pawn like that, uh, you always get rid of the melee weapon. They are no longer useful for melee. You just slap a long range bolt action. Unlikely to hit because they're wounded, but you know, it's better than nothing. At that point, he's too susceptible to drop and they won't tend in time. Uh, more components can mined out, but honestly, Knight and Aragon, they have the mother load and they all just drafted up. What's going on? Oh, Red's pushing up. They have the incendiary launcher. They have two bolt actions and a machine pistol. They are ready for war and Yellow sees it. Now, Yellow's getting pressed two sides, but it looks like the pressure from Purple has abated a little bit, so they are going to be able to focus on this. Red is pulling back. Red doesn't want to fight yet. There's still a whole day. We're taking over to day two, and what's going to day two going to hold for us? 
on uh, a very peaceful, pleasant note. It looks like uh, Gassy P and uh, Pax, they are uh, just kind of making their, their place. They're hanging out. They're not too worried about the war going on outside their walls. Uh, they're not even really worried about components. They got one. They're just uh, happy to be here. And, you know, always respect this sort of gameplay. You know, sometimes there's a bit more of a passive approach, but still can win the game. On the aggressor side, uh, not going as well as last game for Shadow and Pax, that's for sure. Shadow and Raptor Shy say they uh, they tried some early shenanigans. Shadow was great with the aggression. They got the grizzly bears for food, but they uh, weren't able to take out any yellow members. And right now, Aragon and Knight, they have a critical amount of components running into day two, and it's going to be hard to catch them up on any team. And looks like day two finally ticked over officially. Change it at the top there. And uh, this is going to be interesting. So if you're watching, who you think is going to win? Uh, my current money is on Aragon and Knight, but they also attracted a lot of attention and they're going to get aggro from red. And purple could possibly swoop in when both teams are attrition, but let's not discount blue. Blue acts like they're not a threat, but they absolutely still are a threat. They have all pawns healthy and they could still come down with a longsword rush. Knight is pushing up 50 components in a stockpile though. Red's going to come and cut them off. Oh, this hurts. Oh, yellow is going to lose all 50 of those components. There's no way they're going to hold this off. And looks like they're just going to try to light it on fire. Honestly, I would just open up completely. Uh, they are going to push up from the bottom. Oh, big shots though on night one. And look at this. There's no cover for yellow. The first fire shootout of the game is happening. Amazing, amazing. Yellow did force red back a little bit. Red is going to hop into cover. And they did set fire to a few of the doors. Red has taken a few wounds. He's pushing up the two machine pistol pawns. They did take down one there. Breach axe for Wrigley. Wrigley needs to get behind cover here. Wrigley does not have the ranged advantage right now. That machine pistol is going to absolutely shred. But if that incendiary launcher connects, maybe Wrigley drops another. Oh, Germany 1942 is getting shot a little bit in the back. And it's starting to look like uh, Yellow actually might have fended off this aggression. They are retreating a little bit here. Plate armor interesting looks like there's two riflemen trying to hold off the gates but uh yeah, the barbarians are here and they're gonna push up very shortly here two machine pistols two rifles three rifle four hunting rifles on yellow side uh, i don't think red has a chance honestly red's gonna have to be really careful they do have two pawns machine pistols there shield belt up uh i don't think that's gonna work though we'll see we'll see he's thinking about walking up now, yellow is trapped. Oh, big shot on Aragon 3. Right as he walks through the door, though, that's going to hurt. Right through the kid, he blew it apart. Red's going to push up here. They're going to try to pincer them in. Yellow needs to uh, needs to push out. I guess they could mine, but they're kind of trapped right now. And yeah, he, I think he realizes this. Now, here's the thing. Repairing is a great option for damaged walls. But what if you have an incendiary launcher? What are you going to repair? Oh, an insulting spree happened for one of Wrigley's pawns. That's a really bad one to get because it makes it more likely that more pawns are going to break in a short time. This is uh, quite the standoff right now. Looks like they are going to mine out a little bit. Maybe try to expand while they're tender wounds. Red needs to, uh, needs to get this figured out, what's going on here, though. I don't think they win this push, and I don't know what their next plan is. Maybe fall back and try to get some more components, but... If they try to push into this, they're going to lose every single pawn. And interesting, they've been picking up stuff as they go from yellow team. So they actually dropped a machining table. And uh, they got 36 components plus 241. Although 42 are on the outside because that guy died. Oh, and they don't want to give that up though. But it's so much fire in the area. That's amazing. The incendiary launcher has actually pincered them in completely. And look at this, Wrigley has the shield and the breach axe. This is the combo you gotta be scared of. When you have someone with a melee weapon, the shield belt, and you have nowhere to run, absolutely nowhere to run, this is gonna be rough. And yeah, Baller makes a great point. Mood is gonna be really rough for both teams, but Yellow is gonna have worse mood because they're stuck inside. And uh, he's just gonna smoke them out. That's uh, amazing, amazing to watch. Oh, I think I heard some shots. Aragorn's popping out. Gets some good shots, but he shoots the pawn that's mentally breaking right now. Probably not the one you want to focus on. 
Uh, Aragon 4 tries to pop out. Doors open. Oh, big shots in on him first, though. Bolt action takes a little bit longer to shoot, so a bit of a disadvantage there. And man, what a what a match so far. It's just a battle in front of the door here. Uh, he shot upwards. Oh, purple. Purple walked up, and Shadow was doing some uh, raiding here. He might look at uh, Red's base, but there's not much to take. 11 components. And here we go. Here we go. Red has opened the gates. And Wrigley's going with the axe. The shield belt's good, but there's uh, way more numbers behind him. Shield belt's down. He's going to drop. Gets one kill. Wrigley, two, for going for another. Does not get it. Wrigley, one with a five, few more shots. Hits Aragon. Both teams are just absolutely shredding through each other at this point. Wrigley, one, versus the world. He's going to drop very shortly. And the aggression has been ended. Yellow survives and takes out red. Red team is out. Looking around the map, we do have blue and... Oh, no! That's a lot of man-hunting elephants. <laughs> blue was doing actually pretty good until uh, they summoned the horde of elephants, which are now going to take out half of their team. Look at this, a trail of devastation these elephants have run through. And uh, he will have three members alive, but the elephants have taken blue uh, down a few pegs for sure. That's uh, unfortunate. See, manhunter elephants, never a good one. I think he tried to hunt the elephants with a longsword too, and uh, that sounds like a Padre tactic. Gassy P over here just running around, picking up stuff. Purple is going to finish yellow though. Look at this. This is interesting. Purple then sees that yellow's caged in and are wounded, and uh, he sees this is his time. Elephants have taken some wounds over too on blue team, so you can't really go up on them though. The elephants kind of guard the area too. Raptor might just collect components, keep yellow pinc pincered in, and uh, they could win honestly. And it's starting to look like Purple's going to win this pretty quick. Yeah, I think uh, Baller was right. My, his money was on Purple. I actually thought Yellow had a pretty good chance here, but uh, Red and Yellow just took too many attrition. Blue had a chance of coming back, but that Elephant Manhunter absolutely ruined his day. And uh, Shadow's pushing in three machine pistols. Uh, he's going to get in soon. Too many pawns have dropped from Yellow, and uh, he's trying to desperately make some slate box to make some more walls. He won't get them up in time, though, so now he's just going to try to hold here. Oh, no, it's a Terminator. Look at this. Plate armor, shield belt with a longsword. How did we not see this? Oh, my God. Purple has literally made the melee Terminator. This guy will walk through and kill anything now. <laughs> That's so great to see. Raptor is a, a OG player, one of the Hunch Mafia, and that is a absolutely juiced up pawn. This is a cool strategy. He has a bunch of peripheral short range pawns to back up an absolute unit of a melee pawn walking through. Oh, Aragon stood up. You are attacking the wrong pawn, Aragon. One slap and uh, Ri is just going to put you down. Aragon grabs a rifle though. He's not out of it yet. He's going to fight to his last breath, but oh my god, Ri is just the unit. It looks like Shadow's learned from that. He's going to put down every pawn he sees here. Aragon trying to hold off, but uh, this is not going to be uh, over for very long. And there it goes. So, we have two teams now. We have blue and purple. Blue is uh, caged in by a horde of angry elephants. And purple has mother-loaded components. So, only way that blue wins is by killing purple. Likely? Mm, maybe not. Oh, the elephants got in. <laughs> How did the elephants get in, Padre? What happened? <laughs> what happened here? Oh my god. It's just a horror story of... <laughs> oh my god. Blue team massacred by elephants. You hate to see it. I think purple just ignores blue right now. <laughs> I don't think they're leaving that base for quite some time. Now, purple does also have mood managed pretty well. Uh, gold fence is always a good call. Let's take a look at this match though from a topical view. You know, yellow really did have it at the start. Um, they had great pressure. 
They had the area, they had the component lead. Purple tried some aggression, loved to see that early from Shadow, didn't pay off. Red saw their opening, they got to day two, they had a decent mass of weapons, pushed in on yellow. Um, but unfortunately that pushed attrition both teams too much. Purple came in, purple cleaned up. Blue got, uh, well, you know what happened to blue. So right now, chances of blue coming back from this, very slim. Um, in <laughs> incredibly slim right now, but uh, they're not fully out, so I'm not going to call the match by any means. They got uh, three pawns, essentially. Raptor wants to get in there and do some work. Looks like he wants to push in from the uh, angle over here. Pax is trying to hold it. Pax doesn't have an elephant tusk, though, but Raptor has a shotgun. Oh, never mind, just a bolt action. Uh, might have been beneficial for Pax to try to rush that, actually. I think he's going to get shot down here pretty quick, though. Now, Raptor could push up from the side there. Uh, they have the tools to end this. They also could win by just waiting. Um, but hey, uh, I don't think he'll do that. Where's the fun that? Oh my god, Wrigley uh, or Lion stood up. Red still has one pawn standing. Are they in it? Maybe. Raptor kills one of uh, their pawns and then starts eating their meal, actually. It's a bit disrespectful. Yellow has a long sword. He might push up. Will be a death rush if he tries it. Um, but he definitely could attempt it. Now, right now, is there anything blue can do to win this? Um, yes. Hope that purple makes a colossal fuck up and uh, tries to rush through the elephants. That's uh, that's pretty much it. Now, I'm not surprised, but uh, I am <laughs> a little bit shocked that Padre went for a melee attack on an elephant um, as his form of hunting. He, maybe he felt that with enough long swords he could do it. Oh, Shadow did push up here. Take a look at this, guys. This is exactly how Blue gets back in it. Shadow pushed up with a machine pistol, and an elephant quickly reminded him of why Blue can't leave their base. Uh, Raptor does actually have a good position on a tunnel to the west. Um, Sap and Yellow here to hold on for dear life. Why is his name Yellow? That's a little bit deceptive, but essentially Padre and uh, Sap are just going to hold in the base and hope that Orange makes a colossal fuck up. Uh, I thought there was a pawn alive for Red. I have a feeling an elephant might have got into them, though. Uh, there are quite a few angry elephants around the map currently. Oh, there he is. Um, Wrigley is there, and he's... Um, what's he up to? He's tending himself, and maybe he's going to pick up a few more pawns and see if he can get back into this game. Now, if we look at component lead, it's not even close. I don't need to tally it for you guys. Purple has the lead. They got all the components that Yellow got. They got all of their own components. Right now, there is no doubt that purple is uncontested as we wrap up into the last day. I'm going to pop this on 2x speed uh, just because right now we have people just kind of chilling. Um, Raptor looks like he pulled back from the base and uh, Blue's going to need to make a decision really quick. Oh, but look at this. Re with the weapon. Re's coming in. They're going to try to block him off here. And it looks like Raptor might actually just finish this with Re coming in. This guy is so geared up, this one pawn. It's with that steel uh, plate armor and the shield belt. Uh, he's going to just shred through this. I'll throw on one X since it looks like we're going to get some finale action going on. Sap desperately trying to hold off here. Gets a few more walls up. Raptor's going to slowly punch through this, but uh, it's only a matter of time. The Terminator is coming in. <laughs> looks like uh, one of the wounded is going to be taken here as well. Yeah, if he had a breach axe, this would be really quick. He'd be able to punch right through it. Hey, Merc. Welcome to stream. Uh, yeah, a bit late, but you can always watch the VOD. And if you're not a VOD person, uh, I do cut and edit the games into single games and upload them as well. Uh, so I'll have that uploaded soon, too. Now, I do hear shooting. Uh, Raptor is... Oh, Yellow got out of the base with a longsword at a Gladius there. And uh, the elephants aren't Manhunter anymore, I don't think. Yep, looks like they have timed out. Now, Yellow has the sword behind Re, as Re noticed. Uh, he's going to get kited by Raptor, most likely here, but Raptor might slip with Macro and, uh, or Micro, and this could easily be uh, a quick cut up here. Yellow P with the sword. Can he catch Raptor? Absolutely not. Raptor's just going to kite him, it looks like. And uh, there's more, more where that came from. Looking in at the Terminator, Re up here is being ignored currently as uh, Sap desperately tries to fortify his base. He doesn't want to die, but 
It's only a matter of time. And oh my god, Gassy P almost caught Raptor there. Raptor kind of faltered a little bit. And uh, this man's getting shot up, but there's nothing compared to the damage that that uh, elephant did to him physically and emotionally. So I think uh, Yellow is going to uh, walk right out of this, no problem. And uh, he drops 50 components there, uh, unfortunate. Well, ate my words, but uh, we all knew it was going to happen. We just need a little bit of positivity or optimism there. Uh, look at all that elephant leather, though. That's kind of nice to see. Re is pushing up. Shadow's coming in. Looks like Purple is dedicated to ending this game, and they're going to end it with aggression. Um, and they push in right here. Four pawns coming in. And uh, what can Sap do here? Is there anything that Sap can do aside from build walls and uh, prey? No, I think build walls and prey is pretty much going to be it actually right now. Purple's pushed in. Purple's coming up from the other side too. There is, uh, there's no outs for this. Last man standing. Sap is going to try to hold for dear life. Oh, and they're going to go for the wounded one too. Look at this. This is just mean. He's trying to rest. He's trying to get back into the game, but unfortunately, here come the machine pistols. <laughs> the game pauses right there, too. Interesting, we're getting a little bit of pausing at the end, but uh, all the game has been pretty clean, so what a what a slate to pause that on, though. Oh, someone left the game. I see. They <clears throat> disconnected. And uh, Sap's running for his life. He has the sword, but uh, he's going to try to pull out of there and... Uh, Peace out to left wing. Is Red still in this whatsoever? Uh, looks like Red's pawn did drop, unfortunately, after getting up. And uh, unless they're doing some backdoor shenanigans. Nope. <clears throat> and uh, last people are rallied for Purple, and uh, Purple's determined to just chase down Sap here. Sap is the last one at, so they're going to be uh, on his tail pretty quickly. Yeah, it's too bad Gassy P's uh, yellow P didn't make it there, but... Uh, oh, <clears throat> looks like Lion joined back. Uh, he just must have DC'd there for a second. Sap is running for his life. Now, does anyone in chat think that Sap even has a little bit of a chance here? Uh, I'm not really sure he has any luck getting out, but it, maybe it's possible. I don't know. Oh, and then uh, Lion disconnects right after he joins. I don't know what issues he's having, but end of the game, and he's not on either team that's... Um, alive still so it's not too big of an issue what could sap do let's see um sap could get a weapon there's three hours left in the match he could do they have any components on their base they have none he could try to remove all the components from purple's base uh small chance there maybe uh he got the incendiary launcher so uh yeah i'm not sure and uh, on his tail pretty quickly here we see raptor and shadow and they're gonna try to cut him off and uh, looks like uh, Sap is trying to cover his trail with a little bit of fire. Hunting rifle will outrange that quite badly. Where could he go? I think we're just going to slowly watch this man get shot down at this point, but... Uh, you know, it's RimWorld. RNG is a thing. Uh, anything could happen, although we're looking at maybe a 0.0001% chance of Sap just clocking these guys with that Incinerary Launcher. A fun fact, actually, if you didn't know, Incinerary Launcher doesn't improve damage with quality, but what it does do is it improves the melee damage of the weapon with quality. So uh, look at this. This uh, clocks for 3.42. It's a heavy uh, pistol whip if you hit that. Now, he's pulling Shadow through close range. He could pop out and pop an incendiary right into him. I think what he's going to do is try to light these components on fire. Uh, will he be able to get through the gauntlet, though? There is a lot of pawns still alive here for Purple. It's buzzing like a beehive, and they're not going to let him get anywhere close to that without shots. Zap's trying to cut off his uh, chasers here, I think. Uh, oh my god, is he going to... Do the fancy feet. Can he break Raptor's ankles? Raptor just collapsed from exhaustion. He's back up. Oh, Sap. Shoot him. Shoot him, Sap. Do it. If you want to join a game, we're going to link the Discord in the description. Hop on in. We uh, play weekly. Anyways, until next time. Cheers. Thanks for watching.